times the six. this morning. We present ourselves before you. We're asking that you speak to us in your word, through your word. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Already we have heard much since we came on Thursday night. And yet it is necessary that we still open the pages of the scriptures and consider the important subject of without holiness all is lost. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace, follow holiness. Without these two things, peace and holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We have no problem with the verse itself, but with the understanding of what the verse is actually saying. Many people profess to believe this verse, who nevertheless find it difficult to experience what the verse is talking about. And as we talk about this without holiness, all is lost, you need to understand the importance of such an experience as well as such a stage as a believer, as a Christian. And because many of us have read this verse before, we have probably even preached on it. And we have professed to believe it. It's important to clear up and for us to have an understanding about what the verse is saying and what the verse is not saying. Now, if the Pharisees of the time of Jesus Christ read this, they're likely to say, we actually believe it. And they will be in the deception that they believed holiness and go to hell. One, there is an unscriptural division between the peace and the holiness. Follow peace with all men. Many of the interpreters and Christians put a full stop there. Cut off the hand and then they just say holiness without which. Referring to holiness as if that is the only thing the verse is talking about, saying without that holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Actually, the verse is saying there are two things in the verse, peace and holiness. Get both together, get them in your heart, get them in your life. Without both of those things, no man shall see the Lord. Now, that corrects an error that you can have holiness without peace. There's nothing like that on the face of the earth. You know many people who don't have the peace of God, they don't have peace in their own hearts, they don't have peace in their family, 
They don't have peace in the church. They don't have peace with fellow brothers, with fellow sisters, and they feel they are holy. They actually think so. Because of what they wear, what they don't wear, because of what they don't drink, what they don't smoke, because of where they worship, how they pray, how they stand, how they walk, how they eat, what they don't eat, when they talk, when they don't talk, all the external expression of religion. Because of that, they feel they are holy. But a good test for yourself is to know, is your heart peaceful? Like deep, gentle, flowing river. And you are not at variance in your own heart. There is no confusion. There is no commotion. There is no contradiction. There is no anger. There is no division within the heart. You are calm within the heart. You are deep within the heart. And within the heart, there is nothing that seems to be pulling you apart. You are at peace internally. You are at peace in your relationship with everybody. Follow that peace with all men in the church. All men in the church. That's where it all begins. And follow peace with your family. I've never seen somebody who is really holy who doesn't have peace with the wife 24 hours of the day. And you know that people will live at variance with their wives, with their children, and have such a terrible time being able to live with probably their husbands in the heart. They are almost, uh, you know, far apart, away. Probably not even in talking terms. No peace. And these are the loudest speakers and preachers on holiness. And when they preach it, they don't feel guilty. Because they have, in their own mind, successfully divided that peace away from that holiness. And they feel that you may not have peace with your husband, with your wife, with people around you. You may not have peace with the pastor in the church. You may not have peace as a, as a pastor with the state representative. And uh, you may be all within you, boiling within. There is no peace within. Between you and uh, other people who give you some responsibilities in the church. And without that peace, you still believe that you are holy unto the Lord. And of course, the only thing the Bible is saying, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Therefore, it doesn't matter my relationship with other people. Once I have this holiness, which I love, have you ever seen somebody fighting for the state representative? And he loves holiness. I mean, he really loves it. Have you ever seen somebody in disagreement with everybody in the fellowship? Is a know-it-all. Is the one that actually, you know, he is very near God. And uh, you go to him and say, I, I, I see that you are not in good terms with the state rep or the pastor, with your wife, with your children. Now, what's the matter? And he'll say, well, uh, don't talk about uh, that area. I'm not interested in that area. I'm going to heaven. All that matters, which I want to keep to the end, which I don't want anybody to take away from me. I don't want to bother myself. Uh, all the argument is enough. I know I'm right. I know they are wrong. And when God uh, convinces them, they will know I am right. They are wrong. What I stand upon most in the Bible is without holiness. No man shall see the Lord. That's what I stand upon. He doesn't stand upon follow peace with all men. He stands upon holiness. Without that isolated holiness, dry holiness that has no peace, dry holiness that doesn't have any love, without that isolated holiness, 
He believes he cannot see God. You want to see God without peace in your heart? You want to see God without love? God is love. So many people stand on this. And all they feel about the verse is all that the Pharisees felt about their lives. The tithes they paid. The phylacteries that they extended. That's a border of their garment. The long prayers they prayed. And the washing of the hand to the elbow whenever they were going to eat. The repetition of some forms of praying. The regular attendance in the synagogue. And the fighting zealously for Sabbath keeping. They were holy. Aren't many people like that? You know, it doesn't do anybody any good just to quote a verse without interpreting it. Because if I quoted this verse, and I just said, we don't have time to interpret, but that is, let's see if you believe this. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Oh yes, praise the Lord. That's deeper life distinctive. We are better than those other churches, and heaven knows you are not. You are better in the head, in what you know, in the verses you can quote. But you are not better in the life that you live. So then, without holiness, all is lost. Think about it. All the reward we talk about, without holiness, there's no reward. All the experiences we testify about without this peace, without this holiness, all those things, they fall to the ground. They don't matter before God. I'm sorry, our dressing matters not to God when we are not having peace and holiness. Think of a mad man dressing like any of these our sisters are dressing. The dressing will not matter. The lady, sorry, the lady, yes, is mad. Think of a mad man wearing a suit, dignified. The head is cold. The body is clean. But he's mad. He's insane. That dressing will not matter. A bitter, angry man is mad before God. And the dressing that bitter man, angry man, a man or a woman that cannot be at peace with his neighbor, with his wife, with his co-workers, a man or a woman that cannot be at peace with people in the church, that person is mad. Doesn't matter, she is not wearing jewelry. Don't you see people on the street who are mad, who are not wearing jewelry? Don't you see mad women who wear scarves? Don't you see those who, who just destroy everything will pull the whole house down and yet they wear this gown, they cover their nakedness. Holiness starts from the heart, not from the dress. And if you are properly dressed but you are mad, causing confusion, anytime you come into the fellowship, the heart of the people will caught. Are you not a madman? You know as we are here now, when you, hear, when you see somebody, bringing a cutlass, shouting. Everybody is disturbed. And when somebody who is supposed to be a Christian, a worker, even a preacher, comes into the fellowship, and the moment they see that person, their hearts caught. Isn't there something wrong with that state leader, with that pastor, with that preacher, that when they see it is not a fountain of love that comes out. It is not a togetherness spirit, unity that comes out. It is fear that comes out. Something is wrong somewhere. If we are at peace with people, when they see us, they are at peace with us. But if the people know, we are always troubleshooters. 
always going to cause problem. When they see us, even the peace they had, before we came in, that peace will be disturbed because we are not men and women of peace. And the word of God says, follow peace. And little children, they know men and women of peace. And when your little children, when you, when you come in, and those little children, they are disturbed, their hearts caught, they are afraid, they lose their peace, they become absent-minded, they don't know what they are going to do again. Those children are telling you a story. Man, you are not a man of peace. You have come in, and we just have to be like this, like a lion has come in and all the cats must get into their holes. Or a woman comes in and the husband is afraid. The husband has been happy, peaceful, collected, calm. Now the wife comes in and the man says, ah, ah, why is it so early like this that she has come? Because whenever she comes in, trouble has come in. But she's a Christian. She's born again. And she is sanctimoniously sanctified. Such people, they don't step upon an ant when they are walking. They walk in a holy manner. Deliberate, quiet, but don't be fooled. They are terrible. And their husbands know that they are terrible. Once the husband says it takes grace to live with this wife, that's a story. Story. If it takes grace to live with you, it's a story. If it takes grace, you as a worker, if the state leader says, I thank God for the grace of God. To stay with that worker, walk along with that worker, it takes grace. It's telling us a story. That without that extra bit of grace, so and so, it's terrible. And when you yourself, you tell people and you say, look, maybe you are new in the state and you come to and you say, state leader, you'll need to be patient with me. I was in this state before. Well, they didn't quite enjoy me. Well, I'm not perfect. That's right. You got the story. You are not perfect. And you are so happy you are not perfect. And coming from that state to this state, you cannot sit down on the road and say, before I enter the border of that state, that thing that made everybody in this other state inconvenient, and they are happy that I am leaving the state. And uh, they say, ah, sister, we hear that you are leaving our state. When are you going? <laughs> next week. Uh -uh, next week. Isn't there a vehicle uh, tomorrow? <laughs> That's telling you a story. And what made them in that state to fear you? And to really be running away from you. Now you are coming to this state. You cannot sit down at the border of the, of the new state and say, this thing they are complaining about, which doesn't make me to have peace with all these people. Let me drop them at the border before I enter. And you enter that state again. As a new person, they didn't know you before, at least as a worker. And you go to the state rep and you say, state rep, in the other state, my former state representative, he had a lot of grace. Because otherwise... You couldn't have kept me as a worker. And um, I'm giving you also a warning. You need grace. I'm a worker, but you will need grace. To live with me and to use me as a worker. Do we have it? I mean, this thing they are talking about, without peace and holiness, they are together. Follow peace and holiness, without which both things no man shall see the Lord. And you see, many, many people, when they go all about and they talk about being holy, being righteous, 
What they are talking about is something you can see on the external. But look at this. Peace starts from the inside. Why should the, there are two things in the verse that are very essential, that are very important. The peace and the holiness. How can the peace start from the inside and then the holiness will start from the outside? How can? If the peace is starting from the inside, then the holiness is starting from the inside. And when that um, peace uh, comes on the inside of you, it makes everybody come to rest. And when that holiness comes, the holiness does not cancel or supersede or hide the peace. You've got peace in your heart. Now holiness has come. The holiness will not cancel the peace. The peace will be there, coexistent with the holiness. The holiness will not hide and cover the peace. The peace is still glaring, manifest, seen by everybody that that man is a peaceful man. That woman is a peaceful woman. Two sisters living together. In the same house. The same room. And they are deeper life, holiness sisters. Their song is holiness. You know these sisters who, when they come to our fellowship, deeper life, holy people, workers. I mean, when you are singing and you are clapping your hand like this, I mean, they are so holy. Yet, they are so holy that they cannot clap their hands. They can't live together at peace. Mm -hmm. This holiness that, you know, people uh, handle, that they, see, they seem to have. That it is only something that is external. That they can't sing and worship God. They can't clap and be joyful. I mean, the holiness that doesn't even give you joy. Throw it away. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And yet, you know, the holiness comes in. The joy. I mean, it's somebody who was nice before. Very nice. Very peaceful. You know, will talk with you, will help you, will, will love you, and will speak encouraging words before she was sanctified. Now she becomes sanctified. She can't talk to anybody. I mean, if she talks... The holiness through the mouth will fly away. <laughs> so you see, we need to begin to understand what the Bible actually says. The holiness that you have that now makes you to be more clever in condemning other people. That makes everybody your enemy. Everybody, now all the other people in the fellowship, you know them to be backsliding. And you are the only one that is standing. You are holier than the state holier than the pastor, holier than everybody else. And whenever they are doing anything or planning anything, you know, these uh, holy people, sanctified people will just, you know, stay apart and will say, uh, ah, sister, what's the matter with you? Brother, what's the matter with you? Well, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to contaminate myself. I want to get to heaven. All that discussion they are having and all that discussion, uh, if I... I know how the Lord is dealing with me. And I just like to keep my state. That's why. Uh, not that there is anything. No. Uh, but uh, holiness is too delicate. And uh, if I talk, I will lose it. And uh, with that false impression, people think that they are getting to heaven. I'm too grateful you have not died. Because if you have died, we would have been rejoicing here. Thank God. They went to heaven. But, you know, you'll be surprised when you get to heaven to find people from Anglican Church in heaven, Apostolic Church in heaven, CAC. There are those people there, they love God. They don't know Bible too much in the head. The little they know is inside their heart. You know, when you don't have uh, too many clothes, the little clothes you have, you pack it in your box, you lock it up very well. Those people, some of them, who don't have too much Bible in the head, the little they have, they hold it like this. 
And while they are dying, they are saying, Jesus, I, I just depend on your blood. Not on myself. I'm not good. But that blood that was shed for me. And as they are dying, they are saying, blood of Jesus, just wash me. I will see your face only by the blood, by that blood alone. And eventually they get to heaven. <laughs> but you, you want to get to heaven on your, Jesus, your blood, it's wonderful. I got saved through that blood many years ago. As I'm dying now, I am holy enough. By the works of my hand, I'll make it. I didn't wear jewelry, I didn't dress anywhere, I didn't do anything. Just holy and holy and holy all the, all the time. I don't smoke, I don't drink. Jesus, I'm coming, get ready for me. And you won't make it. Nobody ever made it on his own strength. Just by the blood of Jesus. I mean, the holiness that makes you so proud. That you feel you can make it all alone by yourself. And yet the Bible says, not the works of my hand. You can't make it by that way. It is not by just the ritualistic obedience. Now I dress this way, I don't dress this way, I don't smoke, I don't drink. By the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You better understand that blood and that grace. When that grace is there, there will be peace in the heart. And you know, many people will be surprised. You find all this when we get to heaven. The people you preached against, and you said they'll never make it, you get to heaven and they made it. You said, but they were not holy by your own standard. But you said you were holy by your own standard. And then you begin to look for some of our sisters, and you know, they are testimonial. Anytime, any day, you know, the Pharisee came and prayed with himself, does, oh God, I thank you. I am not like other men. And how do we pray? Oh God, I thank you. Praise the Lord. I am not like any other person. I don't wear lace. I don't wear judge. I don't wear jewelry. I don't smoke. I'm not like Anglican, these publicans. I'm not like assemblies of God, these publicans. I am deeper. And the publican comes and the publican says, God be merciful unto me. If you will mark iniquity, I will never stand. All I'm looking for is mercy. And Jesus says, give me your hand, let's go to heaven. And this other person not wearing lace, not wearing jewelry, not smoking, not drinking. You go to heaven, the heaven you want to go. The heaven of your own creation that you can climb up on your own by not wearing lace, go there. You can't be proud of holiness. Pride and holiness cannot live together in the same heart. Condemning other people, that's not part of holiness. Follow peace with all men, all men in other denominations. You are not fighting with them. You are not competing with anybody. You believed on the Lord Jesus Christ because you want to believe. Not because other people are doing well or not doing well. What's that to you? John, um, Peter said unto the Lord, what shall this man do? And Jesus said, that's none of your business. You follow me. What's your business? Condemning assemblies of God. Condemning Anglican. Condemning Christ's apostolic church or apostolic church or apostolic faith or false court. Is that the gospel that God has put in your hand? Are you building your own church upon the crumbling church of another person? Follow peace with all men. Whichever church they are going to, let there be peace in your heart. Let there be love in your heart. Love everybody. You may not agree with what the other people are doing. You Jesus didn't agree with what the publicans were doing. He loved them. You may not agree with all their doctrines, all their error. Thank God if God has taught you. But if they are wrong, must we kill them because they are wrong? Must we be beating them because they are wrong? Is it a part of holiness and peace? When I come to my own congregation, and I'm tearing down celestial, the church. 
If you are concerned, go there and talk to them and help them. Why abuse? Is a coward that will abuse a man when he's not there? And is a wicked man that will abuse a man when he's there? If the celestial people are there, they didn't come for you to abuse them. They came, ah, somebody who has been going to celestial church all these months. And he said, I must be missing my way. Let me go to this deeper life that I'm hearing about. And then he comes to your church on Sunday morning. Don't you know? That is a great thing that he has done. Leaving his church on Sunday morning and coming to your church to find out about God, about Jesus, about the Bible. And maybe he came just as he is. How are we to come? Just as I am. Just as I am. I come, I come. With his white garment. Then he sits down. He's looking for something. Then you begin to beat him on the head. To drive him away to a wicked man. How you find a lady, a lady that has been going to Anglican church all her life. She was born there. But the Holy Ghost was saying, woman, I see something inside your heart. And I know that you are looking for me. You've been hearing about this deeper life church. Why don't you go there this morning? And she, she came there. How did she come? Just as I am, I come, I come. In their own church. They don't use cars, some of them. And uh, the pastor doesn't feel that jewelry is wrong. That's the way she has been brought up all her life. And she's been to America, she's been to London, and that's how they go to church there with their jewelry, even with their slacks. How are we to come to God? Just as I am. And uh, it's when we get to God, it's God that changes us. It is not we that change ourselves to be conformed to God. It is the grace of God that will change us to be conformed to the image of the Son. Not the people changing themselves. And they just come, they have never heard, they have never read Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. They have never known about 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. And they come to God just as they are, with their jewelry, with their head uncovered. And you preacher, you don't understand how God is moving that person, leading that person by a gentle hand to come. And you deviate from your message and you begin to beat that poor woman, a woman that has fallen already. You begin to trample upon her. And the devil says, you are seeking for God. You let Catholic, you went to Anglican. You let Anglican, you want to come to deeper life. Look at how they are doing you. The first day you have come, the morning shows the day. If you remain in this place, these people will kill you. And that person will run away from God. Aren't you wicked? You have got the salvation. You don't want other people to get it. This is not holiness. Condemning other people, criticizing other people, beating other people down, making fun of them in our preaching. Or in our attitude, that's not holiness. The type of holiness that makes us think in the nostrils of all the other people in town. And they say, well, those people are good, they are strict, but the only thing is that they don't respect anybody. They will just criticize, condemn everybody. Is that holiness? Follow peace with all men. Can you sit on the same bench with a Catholic person and not feel that you must condemn him for following after Mary? What do you want him to do? Nobody has ever read Bible to him. That's what they have taught him since he was born. How do we get him to see the light? By just coming to him and saying, you are a Catholic? What a pity. You know you are going to hell? A Catholic, you worship Mary, you don't worship Jesus Christ, you are going to hell. The Bible says, oh, listen to that Bible. You have condemned him already. That's your holiness. Holy preaching. I'm bold. You are not bold, you are wicked. And I wear rubber would think he is bold because he's able to shoot somebody. He is not bold, he's wicked. A driver that says, get out of the way. If you don't get out of the way, I'll crush you. And then he crushes the man's leg. They have to take him to orthopedic hospital. He says, I am bold. He's not bold, he's wicked. 
And when you go out and you talk to people to condemn them, that's not boldness, that's wickedness. And that's what people think that that is holiness. It's not holiness. Follow peace. If you're preaching, your lifestyle, your attitude is not peaceful. Peaceful. You cannot be holy if you are not peaceful. Follow peace. Peace. With all men. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Rise up and let us pray. Brother Kimomi from Ogun State, please come to pray for us. Our blessed God, we thank you because of your great love for every one of us. Father, from all that we are hearing and all that we listened to since we came, and especially now that you are talking to us to dismiss us from this program, Father, we know that your concern is so great that if after we have worked, and we have labored, and we have toiled, and we have led thousands of people as a believing you to the throne of grace, that if in the past we have wounded many people, we have ruined people's lives, uh, unknowingly we were not preaching the gospel of peace, we were preaching the gospel of condemnation. But Lord, you have corrected us. We are praying that once and for all, we will take the correction. And we will go back and lead others with love and concern in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we want to preach like you preach. We want to teach like you teach. And above all, we want to love like you love. Father, we pray that within us, having, having made peace with God, we ought to be at peace with our fellow men also. Lord, we are asking you, that thing that makes us to feel proud that we are better than other people. Father, by your glorious hand, by your wonderful hand, cut it away from our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So that you draw us closer to yourself, so that as you draw us closer to yourself, we'll be able to move closer to other people. Father, holier than thou attitude, we kill and we destroy. No wonder many locations remain stagnant. Because people are not seeing Christ. They are not seeing love. They are not seeing anything that will attract them to the gospel. Because we surrounded ourselves with criticisms, sanctimonious behaviors, holier than thou attitude. Father, we pray that the blood of Jesus Christ this morning will be strong and powerful to watch every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, the gospel is a good news. And it's a peaceful, uh, it's, it's a peaceful thing, and people want to love it and desire it. Father, we pray that as you teach us, and as you are telling us to change our methods, to change our behaviors, to change our attitude, we will obey in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you are sending us out from this place. When next we shall come back here, Lord, we don't want to begin to weep again, regretting our mistakes regretting our disobedience. Lord, we want to obey completely. We want to obey perfectly. We want to follow peace with all men and holiness. Because without it, no one shall see the Lord. We know what, we, the only thing that can make us acceptable before God and before men is these two important things. Peace with our fellow men. Oh Lord, we pray that this morning none of us will ever feel I've got enough. If that peace within is not there as it ought to be, Father, do a miracle today. Amen. And let that peace settle within us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, whatever we preach, whatever we say, it must be something that people can look to as very necessary for them. Lord, help us to be able to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go, 
Help us to be able to do all that you have, uh, you have told us. Help us to obey, obey completely. Help us to surrender our whole life to the totality of serving our community in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Father. Much has been given unto us in this place. And we ought to go back and uh, we cannot give less to people. Father, we pray that to whom much is given, much is desired. Father, may we be the type of servant that we do the will of his, uh, his master totally in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because you have answered our prayer. Thank you for blessing us. We pray that, Lord, you will enrich our brother abundantly. Amen. Each time we come here, we go back challenged. We go back refreshed. We go back strong. Father, we pray, Lord, that every day he will be, re he will be receiving from you abundant grace abundant power, Amen. abundant anointing, Amen. so that no time at all we live feel uh, the absence of the Spirit. Oh Lord, we pray that the presence of the Spirit of God will be mightily upon him every day in Jesus' name. Amen. All that he has given to us by your grace, we pray, a double portion you will give back unto him in Jesus' Amen. name. Thank you because you have used him to bless us. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray.